Hey guys, one of the most common difficulties people have playing closed guard is breaking their opponent's posture. Breaking posture is essential for attacking from closed guard. So let's look at some key concepts for breaking it down. So the first thing to understand is that if my opponent's hands are in the air and I just use my knees here to bring to my chest, I'm going to bring him forward, right? That's always gonna break his posture. He's going to find his posture by putting his hands somewhere. There's three primary ways people do this. One is they'll put their hands on your hips like this. So now as I try to bring him forward, he gets his balance from here. Another Another one is he'll go one high and one low, so he'll double grip a lapel and grab the hip like this. Now if I bring him forward here, I can't break him. And the other one is he'll go both high, like in like this, right? So I need a different way to break each of these structures, okay? So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna go through how to break down each control mechanic so I can bring the guy in and start building an attack. So let's start with low. So if the guy has both hands low here, he's uh, controlling here, but actually this is kind of a weak position because if I can pull him over his hands, it's easy to break. So when this happens, I'm just gonna double grip both lapels. I'm gonna do kind of a crunch with my abs and I bring my knees to me. So let go real quick. What I'm really doing here is I'm kind of doing this crunch rocking motion. So my knees come to my chest and I crunch and that pulls the guy forward. When I pull the lapels at the same time, it's gonna buckle him over, right? So we're here. So I grab the lapels, I pull and I buckle. That's often gonna make them post the hands here like this. Okay, uh, two of the main attacks I like to go for once I break posture. One is if this response happens, is I'm just gonna go for an overhook, scoot out to the side here, and now I can start working to a triangle choke and building from this overhook series. I'll do a separate video on that. Another thing that can happen when he goes on the hip here and I bring, bring him forward like this is I break him forward, he posts his hands out, and after he goes here, he starts to put one of his forearms on my chest, and now I can start working up to a high guard as well, and you can build from there. Okay, so, now let's look at the next situation, which is the person going one high, one low. Let's turn this way a little bit. Okay. So when our opponent is one high, one low, this hand is so high now, if I try to pull and break here, it, I can't bring him down over it, okay? So when this happens, instead, I'm gonna focus on breaking this grip. So I'm gonna get a cross sleeve grip, I go underneath, and I grab my own wrist, and now I'm gonna make my wrist really strong like this. And I don't wanna push up with the sleeve, I wanna push up with my wrist and up and to the side a little bit. That'll break the grip. As soon as I break this grip, he's usually gonna try to regrip the lapel and come back. So I wanna catch his wrist, and as he tries to grab, it's almost like he's trying to like murder choke me. I'm gonna guide this across the body. If you can, I prefer to get my wrist on the outside, but you can't always do it, so here is fine as well. Once I guide this across, now I'm gonna switch my left hand behind his tricep. He's gonna try to pull his arm back. This will slow him a bit. I unlock my legs, I shrimp out to the side, and I wanna pull myself up behind and get my chest behind his tricep. Once I get my chest behind the tricep, now it's easy to lock in on the armpit here and I can start progressing from here, pulling my leg out and going into basic attacks for the back. This could also easily turn into a pendulum sweep here. So I try to come out he turns his body back into me. I grab the pant leg here, rock, throw up and go over for a pendulum sweep. Both of those attack series are really good as well. Okay, so the next situation is the opponent has both hands high in the armpits like this. So the difficulty here is I can't really pull him forward because his hands are so high, I can't break him down over the hand like before, and also this grip is hard to break. So usually what I focus on here is pummeling under. The thing though is sometimes if his elbows are kind of tight, it's hard to pummel under. So what I usually do is I kind of get a grip on the shoulders, you can palm it or grab some material, and I try to like bench press the shoulders a little bit. This will force some space to open, and really quick, I'm gonna snake my finger under inside here. So now as they start to go in, he can't see, keep extending here. I'm gonna slowly be able to pummel over this. As I pummel over this, I can either go for the overhook that I showed before, or I like to go for a cross collar grip. Once I get the cross collar grip, I'm gonna do a crunch and I wanna pin my elbow to his chest, okay? If I stay like this with my arm extended, he's gonna be able to re-pummel his left arm back in and then frame. And now when I pull on this collar, you see how he has counter pressure? I can't really do anything with that, right? So instead, once I get this pummel under, I wanna crunch and bring my elbow to his sternum. You see, get closer here. Uh, see, try to re-pummel under that. See, when I have my elbow pinned to his chest, it's very hard for him to re-pummel. Now this makes it easy to start attacking. Often what I'll do here, if, if he stays here, is I'll pummel this, and now I can go for a wrist to throw a triangle choke. Or if he switches his forearm to my chest here, like this, I can grab the elbow, I push his elbow to about my belly button, I jump up, and I start progressing to a high guard attack from here. 
The last situation here is now the opponent's going to be leaning so far back that when I do this, keep leaning back even more. Yeah, when I do this, I can't bring him forward, right? And then anytime I try to get a grip to pull him forward, he's breaking the grip. So this is when doing the hip bump sweep threat is really powerful, okay? So if he's leaning really far back, that means it gives me a lot of support. So when I crunch, it actually pulls me up off the floor. So I'm gonna crunch to pull myself up off the floor and I come up with my elbow and now I'm gonna try to drive over. I like to catch this elbow and I drive him over to try to sweep to mount. Now the reality is, is that very often you won't get the sweep, but he will drive back into you, which again allows you to break the posture. Okay, so I'm here like this, he's leaning back, he's breaking grips. So I come up and I go here. As I come up, he does this, he drives into me. Now I've pulled him down. Now look, now I can start building from here, right? So now I can start pummeling under. If he's got that grip, I push the elbow over, I start going here. If he switches to both low, I just grab, pull, buckle him over, start trapping out here and building. Um, again, real quick, the main two attack series I like to do when I'm here, so just say we buckled him forward. One is the overhook on the arm. Then I like to grab the belt, but you could keep the overhook or the collar. I shrimp out to the side a little bit. I put my foot on the hip and I like to focus on getting this wrist, bringing my leg out and going for the triangle. I have a video on this. I'll put it in the description if you want to go more in depth on it. Um, the other one is the high guard arm bar. And for this one, Basically, once I get this good cross collar grip, I get my left hand behind his tricep. I like to bridge my hip, pop his elbow over to about my belly button. I'm gonna unlock my legs and I kind of twist my hip out to the side a little bit and I lock high over the shoulder and close guard again. Now I squeeze my knees tight, lock my feet down. The power of this position is that it controls his posture with my legs. I, I, my right hand is now free. I don't have to hold the collar of the head as much now and I can focus on locking this wrist down, push his head away and then I unlock and throw over here, okay? Of course, both of those series are very in-depth and I can do entire videos on those, but I just wanted to give you a quick reference. The most important thing is regardless of whatever attack you want to do, if you understand how to break down the posture and attack against all those different control sets, you can keep the offense going. But if you're stuck in your head trying to force one attack and you're not paying attention to what grip your opponent has and how you can break it down, it's very hard to continue forward. Thanks guys, remember to comment and let me know if you have any questions. It helps a lot for giving me ideas for future content.